That's the expression psychiatrists use for a guy who goes around getting into one bang up after another. A guy like this can just step off a curb and he breaks a leg. He can just be shaving and he cuts his throat from ear to ear. Well, maybe trouble prone is the word for it. Anyway, it's trouble with a capital T. Anybody else gets into their car around nine in the evening, what happens? Nothing. You? Well, with you, it's different, all right. Take the next left. What? Don't turn around. Just keep driving. You were late. I didn't know you were waiting. You had your orders. I don't want excuses. You got everything else straight, haven't you? Uh, maybe we'd better go over it again. What kind of a character did Carl get? He said you were reliable. Oh, I'm reliable. Just want to be sure. Okay, I'm going over it once. Only once. Old man's name is Walter Hutt. The address is 45 Cedar Avenue. The rest is up to you. Anything else you want to tell me? I'm leaving the gun here in the back seat. Carl, I have the 5,000 ready for you. Just as soon as I'm sure that Walter Hutt is dead. <laughs> Anybody else gets in that car, and what happens? Nothing. Yeah, it's different, all right, with you. Let me off at the corner. Keep your eyes front. You let him off, and he ducks around the corner before you get a good measure on him. You pick up the Smith & Wesson special from the back seat, and after you make a few phone calls, you head out to the Hutton place at 45 Cedar Avenue. You expect to be greeted by one of those fancy-dressed butlers. Yes? What is it? Well, no butler ever looked like this. Not only the unexpected to keep you staring, but every other item, from those encased in smooth nylon up to the slick featured smiling face framed by the long, wavy auburn hair. Well, have you uh, come to a decision? Hmm. Oh, uh, my name's Mike Hammer. Mr. Hutton's expecting me. Come on in. That's a very pretty tie you're wearing, Mike. Thanks. Um, uh, Mr. Hutton said he'd be waiting for me in the library. First things first, Mike. And I'm the first thing in your path. Oh, well, suppose we arrange to have our paths cross later. I don't always find Daddy's call is worth my time and energy. Yeah, but I'm different. Uh-huh. So am I. You'll find that out. I already have. You haven't even scratched the surface yet. I'll take a rain check, all right? Do you, uh, really want to keep that appointment with Daddy? I mean, uh, immediately? Immediately. I, uh... Have an hour never feeling about it. I doubt you a while, Mike. You will eventually. I hate to inject a note of materialism into this touching exchange, but you're linking my very pretty time. Oh, really? There. Does that make up for it? Now, you've been seeing too many cheap movies, honey. Excuse me. Where are you going? See your daddy in the library. It's been charming. Thanks. You, you louse. Now, don't look now, honey, but your show is slipping. Brett! Brett, come here at once. What's the matter, Gloria? Brett, throw this man out. But... He forced his way in and tried to get fresh with me. Oh, he did, huh? Now, don't get physical, friend. Okay, you. He sidestepped his claw and came in under his belt with a right cross, and as big as he was, he was in... To handle it. While he stood doubled up, she smoldered, and you didn't know who she was madder with, him or you. Well, you just leave them, him aching and her smoldering, and make your way to the library. There in a wheelchair, you get your first look at Walter Hutton. He's snow white on top, and his cheeks have the color of a yellow apple, long past ripeness and very wrinkled. Well, you didn't make yourself very clear over the phone, Mr. Hammer. Well, it's still it's clear to me, Mr. Hutton. Uh, the way it looked, someone mistook me for a professional killer hired to murder you. I beg your pardon? I think you'd better... What? I said that's the way it looked, but it wasn't that way at all. It was just a gimmick. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Now, this is the gun the killer was to use. I checked the registration number. Well, Mr. Hutton, you uh, follow me now, don't you? All right, Mr. Hammer. It's my gun. Now, look, I don't like practical jokes, especially when they're not practical. I suppose it was foolish of me, but I, I thought it practical at the time. I needed someone like you, Mr. Hammer. Someone I could trust. Well, I only do business with someone I can trust. I was desperate. I'm willing to pay anything. Now, you're a rich guy, Mr. Hutton. I heard about you. You collect things, but uh, you haven't got enough to collect me. If you'll only listen for just a moment. Please. Please. All right, for just a moment. What have I got to lose? You, you see this Florentine dagger? 
What about it? This is quite an expert forgery, even to the jewel-encrusted handle. The value of the original cannot be determined in mere dollars and cents. Up until last Tuesday, I owned the priceless object. Oh, you mean someone pulled a switch? Yes, and I want the original recovered with the least possible fuss and, and no publicity. That's why I needed you. Someone completely trustworthy. Oh, you figure it's an inside job. I'm afraid it is. Who lives here with you? Well, my chauffeur, Joe Brett, the cook, Mrs. Darren, uh, Miss Wyatt, my nurse. Uh, for the past year, I've been consigned to this wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So far, you mentioned three people. I met one of them on the way in here, Brett. Oh? Yeah, Brett. Uh, oh, and uh, also your daughter. Daughter? Yeah, the good-looking redhead. Uh, Brett called her Gloria. That good-looking redhead is not my daughter, Mr. Hammer. Gloria is my wife. There are times when you have nothing to say. And if you have, you just keep your mouth shut and try not to look too stupid. Won't you please help me, Mr. Hammer? And there are times when you can't say no. Hutton moves the wheelchair. You just guide it. Outside the library, Mrs. Hutton, personality and all, is gone. As you move toward the rear wing, it becomes clear that Hutton is taking you on a shakedown tour of the whole place. This is Brett's room here. Perhaps you'd better begin by searching that bureau. Okay, it's your house and your show. Well, nothing that looks like a dagger here. Or here. Then maybe you'd better try the closet. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how long has Brett been with you? Oh, about ten months. Mm -hmm. And you've been married? Uh, just a month over a year. Why? Nothing here. Now, what about the nurse, Miss Wyatt? Since the heart attack, just after my marriage. Uh, where's Miss Wyatt now? This is her evening off. Miss Wyatt keeps an apartment in town. Uh, perhaps you should look under the bed mattress. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, okay. Well, Mr. Hammer, there you are. <laughs> really? Just where am I? Why, the original dagger. It's, it's under the mattress. Well, if it is, it's not visible to the naked eye. Wait, it's, it's got to be there. It, it must be. It you... must be. This evening I put it there myself. And now, back to the Mickey Spillane mystery. That hammer guy. Walter Hutton tells you stuns like the bite of a rattler. You're too confused to try any brain work of your own. You wheel him back to the library, and you're ready to dump the whole thing right in his lap. Well, this is terribly shocking. I'm beside myself. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. Now, look, Hutton, we started out with a whopping big lie, and I'm halfway to the door right now. But you can't leave. First, you tricked me here with a phony killer routine. Then you want me to trace a valuable dagger you stole from yourself and plant it on someone else. I don't go for shenanigans like that. All right, all right. I did a foul thing, granted. I admit I wanted to frame Brett. Well, I'm staying just long enough to hear why. I wanted to get rid of him. You could have fired him. But I couldn't. It had to be my way. But now you've got to help. Now the original dagger is really gone. Yeah, well, get yourself another boy. I don't like the way my mouth Now, please, is. Mr. Hammer. This is now a legitimate circumstance. You've got to forget what happened. With the dagger actually gone, my, my motivation is completely changed. Your time is up. Very well. I won't plead with you any longer. Look, here's some advice, Hutton. Framing bread is no way to solve your problem. On my way in here, I saw what's bothering you. You'd better figure out some other angle to keep that cute wife of yours in tow. After you march out of the library, you spot Gloria Hutton in the front hall. The whole setup is a mud puddle and you don't feel like wallowing anymore. So you duck toward the rear of the house, hoping for a clean, quiet exit. But as you pass Brett's room, you know you won't get one. You hear Brett and the woman talking in there. It's not hard to hear when conversation gets into the top octave. No. Now, I told you to keep your nose out of my business. Just for goodness sakes, open your eyes. You're making a fool out of you. Shut up. You certainly end up like the others. Shut up. I said shut up. What were you looking in here for? Nothing, I told you. You're a stinking liar. The whole place was messed up. What were you after? I didn't touch a thing. I came here looking for you. I thought she was with you. Get out. Go on. Get out. Don't ever come. You. 
What do you want? Don't mind me. I was just passing through. Joe, who is he? Oh, you, Miss Wyatt, the nurse. I shrewdly deduced that from your lily white uniform, the only unsoiled item in the joint. I owe you something, Hammer. You better Welsh this time, Brett. You'll thank me in the long run. Uh, excuse me. I must attend to Mr. Hunter. Uh, you'll find him in the library, a sadder but no wiser man. Well, so long, Brett. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, give my disregards to Mrs. Hutton, will you? Wait a minute, Hammer. What is this? Guy? I still tie wrinkling. I still owe you one, and I'm going to pay him. Brett's mystic style hadn't improved since you last go with him. He was still a prime sucker for a right cross. You leave him doubled up and you head for the rear exit, but you never get as far as the door. <laughs> The screen comes from the library. When you get there, Miss Wyatt is standing in the middle of a room pointing to Walter Hutton's empty wheelchair. He hasn't walked in a year, but he's gone now. You have the idea you're going to start to look for Hutton, but someone else has another idea. Oh. The same white flash as a hammer and an anvil make lace your brain. Yeah, you've had it right behind the ear. When you come around, you feel as sour as the morning after, only there's been no night before to make it worth it. Feeling better, Mr. Hammer. You're on the sofa in the Hutton Library, and Miss Wyatt is doing the Florence Nightingale bit. I had Brett carry you here. Oh, it was Brett who sent me charging with the light brigade, huh? Yes, I'm sorry. I had no idea. Where is he now? I want to see. Please, I, I've got to talk to you first. Mr. Hutton didn't walk out of here. He couldn't have. He must have been carried. Mr. Hammer, I'll hire you myself. Oh, to do what? To find Mr. Hutton and prove that Brett had nothing to do with the disappearance of that Florentine dagger. Why your very special interest in Brett? We're married. Oh. But legally separated. Oh. Brett isn't bad, Mr. Hammer. He's just weak. Weak? Ask my head. And weak enough to be tormented by that... that thing Mr. Hutton married. That's the nicest thing you ever said about me. Mrs. Hutton. Oh, how'd you reach the keyhole? With a stepladder? Remind me to buy you a snappy new tie. We can hang yourself. Oh, now look, it's too late for apologies. In case you're interested, your husband is missing. I know, but he isn't really missing. If you want him, you'll find him out in the garage. On the floor. Face down the blob of grease. You find Walter Hutton exactly where Gloria said he was, face down on the garage floor, unconscious but alive. You pick him up, and you'll bet he weighs no more than Gloria does. On the way up to Hutton's bedroom, Brett joins the parade. You're saving what you owe Brett till later. When you put Hutton on the bed, he's still out. His pulse is normal. Really? How nice. All broken up, aren't you, Mrs. Hutton? Mm, terribly. What do you know about this, Brett? You don't have to answer him. He's not the police. Oh, tell him, Joe. You're only harming yourself well, by Brett, not... Well, Brett, you don't have such a good memory, do you, Hammer? I was with you. I know where you were. I'm asking what you know. Aren't you asking Helen? Who was there? I'm asking you. You're just wasting time. Brett carries my husband up and down the stairs every day. He's had every chance to drop him, and he hasn't done it. Doesn't she have all kinds of nice thoughts? She thought of this, you. I wouldn't be surprised if she did suggest that Mr. Hutton be accidentally dropped. Why, you... <laughs> Oh, 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 and believe me, I'm glad to leave. Yeah, and I'm going with you before this crust gets too hard to wash off. You take Helen Wyatt to her apartment, and you have the feeling you've taken a dove out of a cage of vultures. Then you go home, willing to forget the whole nasty mess. But after an eight-hour sleep peopled with ugly but familiar characters, you get a phone call. Mike. Oh, I thought the nightmare was over. Don't be nasty, Mike. We could make an interesting couple. Uh, nothing could be that interesting. I've got to see you. Please come to the house right away. Let's try another number. Have the phone book filled with them. Oh, you must come. I never knew what that expression meant. My husband told me how he got to the garage last night. Oh, is that so? It concerns Helen Wyatt. How? I'll tell you only that it can mean a great deal of trouble for her. Unless you come out here and soon. <laughs> So you go, and soon. Something about Helen Wyatt makes you want to help her in case this is on a level. Something about Gloria Hutton makes you want to hate her. Hello, Mike. 
Where's your husband? Oh, be nice to me, Mike, please. Be nice to yourself. What's it all about? Oh, kiss me, Mike. Just once before you go up to Walter's bedroom. Kiss yourself. I'm here only on business. All right, Sheil, come on. The old man's upstairs, small and lost in the oversized bed. As you make the cross-country trip to his bedside, he orders the new nurse out of the room. Uh, thank you for coming, Mr. Hammer. I didn't come for thanks, Sutton. What's all this guff about Helen Wyatt? It's no guff, as you call it. She attempted to kidnap me. Now, look, she was with me practically every second before you disappeared. Oh, it wasn't she personally. It was that man she let in through the terrace door. A big, burly man. Oh, really? He couldn't have been too big and burly, considering how short a distance he hauled you. He suddenly became frightened. It couldn't be that uh, he was the same guy you hired to pull me in. I admitted to you that that was a trick. This isn't... You have my word. I'm still not buying. Well, then, why not ask Miss Wyatt herself? Maybe I will. But I'm even more concerned with the Florentine dagger. I'm quite willing to forget the rest if that were returned. Please tell that to Miss Wyatt. Why her? Mr. Hammer, if you were to search Miss Wyatt's apartment... I'm sure you would be surprised. Unpleasantly. Hutton seems as certain of himself as a rooster in a hen yard. You leave him and walk out of the house. Strangely enough, you don't have to belt Brett or unlace Gloria's arms from around your neck. You go to Helen Wyatt's apartment. No answer when you ring the bell, so you get the super to let you in with a pass key. You find nothing in the living room. But it's a different story in the bedroom. Walter Hutton takes it right. You were surprised. And unpleasantly. Oh, put me through the captain chambers, will you? Tell him Mike Hammer's calling. Hello, Pat. Yeah, yeah, I got something for you. 987 East 60th Street. Woman named Helen Wyatt. She's in apartment 6B. She's very dead, Pat. You're back. I'm glad. Doesn't anyone ever open this door but you? You look angry, Mike. Where's Brett? Why? Why is it in this place everybody answers a question with a question? I give up, Mike. Why? Okay, I'll find him myself. No, you won't. He went out ten minutes ago. All right, then your husband will do it until Brett comes back. Wait, I want to tell you something. Tell it to Brett. He won't find my husband upstairs. Look, don't tell me again. Oh, no, nothing like that. Before he went out, Brett brought Walter down to the library. You spoke to Miss Wyatt? No, I didn't speak to Miss Wyatt. But you did find out something nasty about her. Yeah, real nasty. She's dead. Oh, how did that happen? Well, it could be she took her life. Real? Or maybe somebody helped her take it. And that's why you wanted to see Brett? That's why. Well, Mr. Hammer, you're back. Helen Wyatt is dead, Hudson. Oh, well, that is a shock. Is it? How did this happen? Suicide war. So what else? Cozier for all concerned, if it is, huh? Well, what else? Woman's way out know a lot about it, don't you? Well, now, see here, Hammer, what's it going to be? Meaningless chatter or action? Action. The kind that catches a murderer. Then why are you here, wasting your time? If I went anyplace else, that would be a waste of time. You think someone here killed her? What do you think? That's ridiculous. Someone in this house stole your dagger, Hutton, and someone killed Helen Wyatt. You ask me, I'll tell you, I think they're one and the same person. Someone who'd want the money that dagger would bring. Someone who hated Helen Wyatt enough to slip poison into a drink. You're making very wild statements. And you're a very strong candidate yourself. Now, see here, Hammer. You can't blame me for this. Maybe, maybe not. She knew about you and Brad. Shut up. It's okay. I'm not speaking out of turn. Your husband knows. Walter, this is a lie. Is it, Gloria? Of course. Mr. Hammer likes finesse, but he does speak the truth. Painfully. No, Walter. Oh, come on, Mrs. Hutton. We're all showing our cards now. You'd like to be Brett, wouldn't you, Mike? Gloria. Wouldn't you? And you too, Walter. 
You'd like to be trapped, too. Gloria, please. I didn't kill her. He can't prove that I did. I'm leaving that to someone else to prove. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I'm going to turn the whole mess over to the cops. Put that phone down, Hammer. Oh. I never argue with a gun, Brent. That's smart. Stand real still if you want to keep smart and alive. Brent, what's the meaning of this? You, Mr. Hutton, you just sit in that wheelchair of yours, nice and quiet. Well, now we've got ourselves a quorum, but still no answer to the big question. Maybe there is. Brent, I think we should tie Hammer up. At least bind his hand. You're all going mad. Do you think I'm mad, Brett? Uh-uh. I think you're the smartest one ever, Gloria. I'll use the drapery sash. You hold the gun on him. Here. Stop this immediately. In a way, this is for your good, too, Hutton. This guy knows too much about all of us. You're it. insane, completely insane. He knows nothing. There's nothing to know. You just keep him covered, Gloria. I'll get that sash. Don't bother, Brett. Just stay right there where I can cover you. What? You going crazy? Seems to be the general topic of the day. Gloria. If you so much as move an inch, I'll shoot your head off. Mike? I'm listening. You really don't hate me, do you? Will it make any difference? You said you didn't like questions answered with questions. We've got a lot in common besides that. Think we could make an interesting couple now? Depends. I'll be a very rich widow. Gloria. Your husband has to be dead for you to be a widow. All I have to do is pull the trigger. Gloria. You've broken down excuse for a man. What do you think I married you for? Don't talk like that. Mike, if you were dead and Brett took the blame, we'd be set up for life. Just you and me, wouldn't we? That's an angle. And money is an object with you. Same as with you. And we'll have a great time spending it. It's right in the palm of your hand, if you want it. But, uh... If you don't. Did I say I didn't? Um, give me the gun. I'll handle things, honey. Here. Ah, Brett, mustn't move. She'll double cross you on the end hammer, just like she did me. I can't hear a word you're saying. No, I don't. Don't hammer, you can't do a thing like this. I didn't think I could either, but when it comes down to the combination of a slick dame and a barrel of dough, I'm as much a pushover as the next guy. Go ahead, Mike. Do it. Now. Now. Okay. But, uh, close your eyes, honey. Makes an awful mess. No, wait. No, don't, please. Well, you move around pretty well without that wheelchair, don't you, Hutton? But he, he got up and walked by himself. Mike, you missed. Do it again. Shoot him. All right, knock it off. The game's over. What? Hutton... I was waiting to see you jump out of that wheelchair like that. I fired that shot two feet over well, your head. I, I, I was frightened, so I, I didn't realize that I could do, get up and walk. It was an involuntary action. Yeah, I'll bet. As involuntary as going to Helen Wyatt's apartment and killing her. That, that, that is ridiculous. You got to her apartment just the way you got to the garage last night on your own two feet. Well, you're not making sense. What, what motive could I have? The original dagger. The one that's worth so much dough. You stole it from yourself. You never planted it in Brett's room. That was for my benefit, so it would look good when I told the story to the insurance company. That's fantastic. Utterly fantastic. All right, save it, Hutton. I looked up your financial rating today. It's lower than your wife's character. That's no proof that I'm a murderer. Helen Wyatt was on to your setup. That's why she was so sure when she told me Brett was in the clear. You had to kill her to cover yourself. He's broke. A dirty lion cheat. He was broke all the time. <laughs> Yes, Gloria. Practically penniless. Yes, I, I bought you with a name and a reputation and a house that I couldn't even afford to live in. You, you were swindled, Gloria. You know, you were... You... You really were... Were cheated. Man. You're a widow now. His heart should have given out sooner. I wasted a year of my life. A whole year. He was broke. How do you like that? You mean? I like it just fine, honey. Oh. 